Ready? Yep. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name's James Ivey. I'm Paul Drew. From the Studio Rats, oh, yes. and welcome to part the two of my pedal board. It's taken a while. In the last video, the last instalment, <laughs> blimey, it's getting complicated now, we did this bit. This is uh, the Polytune, into the Morley, into the EQ, into the Fuzz, into the Big Muff. Really happy with the way that sounded. So, in, if you remember in the last video, or if you watched the last video, if you haven't seen the last video, go back and watch the video and see how we got to this stage, because we tried out different variations of where to put the fuzzes and the EQ pedal, because the EQ pedal's got a buffer in it. So what we decided on, funny enough, was actually the first, the first few round, because it just made everything, it just pushed everything in the right direction to make it sing, didn't it? Everything. Yeah. You, you can get into the technicalities of impedance mismatching and matching and all that sort of stuff, but actually there is no substitute mm -hmm. for just trying it and seeing what worked best. So technically, this shouldn't really work. Technically, it shouldn't work. I mean, it it will it, work, but it's it isn't the right way technically of doing it because we're going from a buffered output, which is on the equaliser, going into the fuzz face. So it shouldn't work. But it sounds great, doesn't it? But it, it sounds really good and, and I'm really happy with how it's yep. all sounding. Um, as you will no doubt notice from the uh, little opening ditty performed so beautifully by my co-host. There's a couple of fluffs, but anyway, we'll see. <laughs> we now have the rest of the pedal board kind of populated. Now, it ha we have to say out loud, um, some stuff didn't make the grade, did it? Definitely not. Just um, show them. I'm afraid yeah. these two babies, the, um, the two tone bones, Soon to be for sale on eBay. On eBay, yes. Um, just a bit nasally, and they weren't different enough. Do you know what it is? I just think I think maybe that would work into a different amp, maybe, or if it would work going straight into a desk with a with some sort of IR. Yeah, but plug in. They weren't different enough to make it onto the board. No. Um, however. We have added, and I think this is because they're, they're, they're all quite modern-ish pedals that they've made it on, and there was no particular order involved in this. Mm -hmm. There was a little bit of trying, but not too much. Uh, the Rev G4, the red one, which is rather lovely. The Maxon TD, uh, T RTD 800, which we've done a whole video on, because I think that is genuinely like that. a a hidden gem amongst pedals. Yeah, it's really interesting. And probably the most ge generic pedal I have, the Spark Booster, the CC Electronic Spark Booster. You know, the funny thing about this pedal board, it is almost exactly the opposite way round to the way that I would do it. Yeah. I would I would normally go lightest drive into heaviest drive. Yes. And we've almost we've almost gone the other way around. It's completely almost. the other way around. Now it has to be said that the spark, if we had been working purely in a pedal board only environment, I don't think the spark would have made the cut. Because on its own, it sounds like this. We're pushing it a little bit. I think we could bring that level back a little bit. I like it. Sounds great on its own, but it does not play nicely, as nicely with some of the other pedals. It's there for one reason and one reason only. Because that running into the Chandler is a really nice front end for the Chandler. It's one of the only pedals that plays nicely with the Chandler right. as, a, as a sort of boosted front end. Yeah. Um, combinations of the rest all sound pretty good. I think the Fuzz Face and the Morley sound really good together. Let's have a, have a blast of that because that sounds amazing. Mayhem. Absolute chaos. Like that. I like those two together. The the EQ we're using just to push the level a bit and, and push some clarity when we need it. Um, you're not a fan of the Rev, I know. Nope. But it, again, in a studio pedal board, it does have a place because it is the top end of what I would ever do 
distortionally. Okay, nice. It's proper, Good work. it's proper nasty, chunky, raw. However, when we initially plugged this pedal board in, there was something that wasn't quite right. And there still isn't at the moment. There's still something not quite right. Because what's happening is we're getting quite a lot of signal loss running from pedal to pedal. And even though the cables are only small, the cables and the components inside these units are still adding up the cable length and we're getting some signal loss. And it's, we are talking, but there is a, it's a feel, is, it affects top end first, clearly. Definitely. And even in bypass, I mean, these are older style pedals. Sure. The new stuff obviously is quote unquote true bypass, whatever, but there is still something going on. Yes. And you fixed it. And I did. So I've given James a little present. Shall I plug it in? Well, here's the sound. Here's the sound before. Let's plug it in. And here is the sound after. It's just doing a lovely cleanup job, isn't it? It's just kind of like balancing out yeah. the whole board. It's almost like, yeah, all of the frequencies are now coming out together as opposed to yeah being lost in, in the signal chain. And what is this box with no controls and no switches and no nothing? This is just a buffer. So this is just a simple buffer, like what you'd get inside a, uh, a boss pedal but it's made by TC Electronic and it's on the output now. So we've got all these pedals running and the last in the chain is now the buffer and the buffer's then going to the amp. And it's made such a massive difference. It's made it like studio sound as opposed yeah. to just like. And all the pedals play nicely with it. Yep. I mean, if we hit the spark in now, the spark becomes a, a lot more usable because of this, I think. <laughs> That's the biggest difference. That goes back to how it sounds yeah. on its own. Yeah. And I think that's what it is. It's, it's taking the, where we had a kind of a, a degradation, if you like, of, of the signal between pedals. It's kind of got rid of all that signal deg yeah. and we've now got the, te the sound of the individual pedals when they were plugged in on their own. Yeah. Um, it's doing some impedance balancing all that sort of technical stuff, which yep. we're not going to go into because we ain't qualified. Um, but I'm going to, at this point, I say thank you very much. You right, mate? <laughs> Happy pleasure. Christmas to me. <laughs> it's a pleasure. So, um, <laughs> so, I've got a big amount of space now. You've got plenty of stuff to fill up there. It's all good. The truth of the matter is, even with these two, I actually genuinely think five drive pedals, five types of drive, is probably enough. Yes. Yeah. Is that? I don't think you need more than that. I don't, I don't think, think I do. That. I mean, personally, I'd have a tube screamer type pedal in there, but I guess that's sort of doing that sort of job. Yeah, when I kick it into the overdrive mode rather than into full distortion, which yep. is at the moment. Yeah. Um, the revs being my high gain, nasty thing. Yeah. These two are their own tone in their own right. Yeah. Um, the EQs doing me a nice little job of kind of setting up for alternative guitars or giving me some a slight different sort of EQ push yep. into the whole system. I'm happy, it sounds great. Um, I just need to remember how to play now. <laughs> it's always a slight downside. But um, we came to this through trial and error. We didn't come to this through, um, there was a little bit of you know scientific knowledge and forethought and planning, but actually there is nothing quite like sitting down. Don't necessarily do it on your board, do it on the carpet and just try out your pedal order before yeah. you start confirming it down to the Velcro or yeah. whatever, you, whatever means you're using. Yeah. And I'm going to always suggest this. If you're not happy with a soldering iron, or it, learn, because you will save yourself a fortune making your own cables. There's, a, there's only two connections either end of a guitar cable. It's not difficult. Or, to be honest, you can buy them fairly cheaply anyway. So really hope you enjoyed that. Um, I certainly have, because quite frankly, we've spent the, most of this afternoon uh, after breaking my gear, fixing my gear, which is great. Yeah, you've got a nice new pedal board to play with. Nice. Lovely. And nice. some new toys. Um, thanks ever so much for watching and joining us. Um, if you got something out of this, as Paul would always say, like, subscribe, hit the bell. 
And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. So my name's James Ivey. I'm Paul Drew. And we will see you again very soon. Cheers, guys.